Hello everyone, today we will come back to with software part 2. In this part, I will give you how to find the thermostatic valves. If there's a component within the cooling system, how can we retrieve information about it as quickly as possible? For instance, if you know the English name of the Van Hang Neat, which is thermostat, you'll find it located in group 20 of the engine's cooling system. Alternatively, you can access the entire cooling system data to look for it. So, you can retrieve the complete cooling system for the engine. But how about the data? In this case, when you look at the structure of the software, you'll notice that each type of data is categorized and their suffixes indicate what they represent. For example, AR stands for Repair and Testing Work. SI stands for Service Information Maintenance Related Data. Other categories include data for measured values. Service Instructions, or GF, which refers to system configuration and theoretical principles, i.e. how the system works. If you want to access electrical diagrams, look for items marked with electric PE. Let's say you want to specifically check or remove install the thermostat. The information you need would be under testing and repair work. Here, you'll find the disassembly and installation procedures for the thermostat, water pump, cooling fan, or removing slash installing the radiator. On the interface, this area shows the main folders and the data you've just searched. When you click on any of these folders, detailed information will appear below. For example, the first sections include Notes on coolant Draining and refilling coolant Cooling system inspections and guidelines Each folder may contain several subfolders. Let's say you're working on removing and installing the thermostat. The system will display the title of the folder you're working in. There's also an expand button that allows you to view more detailed content on a single page. If you prefer a multi-page layout, you can click to switch views and select by page. In the case of removing the thermostat, you'll see the engine type is 271 9. Item 1 is the pipe. Item 2 is the thermostat. Item 3 refers to the bolt securing the pipe. You'll also see component locations in relation to the engine. For engine type 271.8, Take note that the thermostat assembly is different. The software shows you the engine model and the construction, shape and design of the thermostat. For engine 271.8, the assembly includes five bolts and a seal that holds the thermostat unit together. You can clearly see the difference on the right side of the interface. You can observe here that on this side are the operation steps listed in order. For example, step 1 is draining the coolant. And step 2 might be removing the air filter hose, right? 
This section shows the specific assembly disassembly steps. If you want to see the details of each step, pay attention to the red colored icons. These indicate sub-pages or sub-folders that provide detailed instructions for each step. For instance, step 1 is to drain the coolant. Clicking the red icon will guide you through the exact process, like checking and removing the radiator caps, etc. These are the steps for draining coolant. So, what does that mean? It means that each main step can include several smaller steps. To understand them in detail, just click the corresponding icon to view the specific instructions. Another note. On the display, you'll see different types of content. If it says document, that means the data is presented in both text and images. But if you only want to see images, you can click on the picture section. Or if you just want a quick view of the workflow steps, there's a section for that too. Additionally, you can view basic data, such as torque specifications. If torque data is included, it will usually appear in green colored boxes. Click those green boxes to access torque values. For example, if you're tightening or loosening bolts, the green icon will bring up the torque table. For instance, a bolt might require 9 mm. So, in summary, Red boxes, icons, represent specific instructions or detailed steps for a given task. Green boxes show torque values or technical specs to help ensure you're doing the job correctly. There are two types of data display formats. One is the detailed page-by-page -page view. and the other allows you to zoom in and out to examine information more clearly. OK, that covers the inspection section. For example, if you want to check the coolant capacity, look for the Filling Capacity BF section in the basic data. You'll find the coolant capacity listed there. Scroll down and pay attention to the right-hand column. You may need to expand it. The faded or grayed-out colors represent engine types used in other vehicles. The red highlighted row shows the engine type you're currently working on. In this case, engine type 271. Specifically, 271860. So, from there, you can identify the correct data. From this information, you can extract the relevant data. For example, you'll see that the coolant capacity for engine 271.8 is 9.6 litres. However, for vehicles with model designations like 204, 207 or 212, meaning C-Class, E-Class, etc., using the same 271.8 engine, the coolant capacity is only 7.5 litres. Why is there a difference in coolant volume? Because the cooling system doesn't only serve to cool the engine, but also to heat the cabin interior. Some vehicles are equipped with dual heater cores, which require more coolant. As for coolant specifications, they usually consist of antifreeze and water. That means the mixture includes both antifreeze fluid and water. The ratio depends on the target freezing temperature. For instance, to prevent freezing at 37 degrees, you need a 50-50 mix of antifreeze and water. 
If you want protection down to 38 degrees, you'll need a mix of 55% antifreeze and 45% water. For engine type 271.9, the coolant capacity is only 5.6 liters. So that's how we extract information on coolant, disassembly steps and torque specs, including the location of the thermostat. Additionally, you can also find info on replacing the water pump, which is similar to the thermostat in terms of disassembly steps. There's also a section called Mixed Information. This section contains a wide range of theoretical content which is especially useful for those interested in technical background. In section 7, for example, if you navigate there and search for function, you'll find an overview table introducing the various systems and components. One thing to note is that GF in the table of contents refers to theoretical data. So if you're researching something like the fuel system, or, as in our case, the cooling system, you'll find detailed explanations there. For instance, within the thermal management system, you'll see functional descriptions of the thermostat, block diagrams of the thermostat system, input and output signals going into and out of the engine control unit, all of which can help you understand and analyze the system in detail. So what does this mean? It means I'm guiding you through a specific case, how to find information on removing and installing a thermostat, torque specifications, and coolant capacity for the engine's cooling system. All these technical parameters can be found in the documentation. To speed up future searches, I'll also show you how to save these data for quick access later. For example, let's say you want to revisit the coolant volume for various engines. You would again go to Group 20, Cooling System, Filling Capacity, BF. Once you search, if there's only one result, it might open the document directly, rather than listing multiple items. You'll again see the red highlighted row for the engine you're working with. Now how do you save this file for quicker access next time? You go to the bookmark section, choose New, and save it under a custom keyword. For example, Coolant Volume. In the description, you could write something like Total coolant volume required for the engine according to specifications. Save it, and even if you restart the software, you can retrieve the file instantly from the bookmark menu. Previously, I had saved a file for the disassembly and reassembly of the thermostat. Just click it, and it opens directly. This is a fast and efficient way to store and retrieve technical information you've already found. One more quick tip. For faster searches, use different search functions, especially full text search. This is the one I use the most. For instance, if you know that N310 is the abbreviation for the engine control unit and you want to find the wiring diagram for it, just go to full text search, enter N310 and select to search within the electrical schematics section. Okay, after that, I start the search. As you can see here, the wiring diagram for the engine control unit appears right away. Let's zoom in. Here it is, the wiring diagram. This is the complete wiring diagram of the engine control unit. I'll also have a separate video where I guide you in more detail on how to read wiring diagrams, how to understand and utilize them properly.
Only by understanding the diagram correctly can you perform accurate diagnostics or use measurement tools effectively. So, I'll see you in that upcoming video. That was how I found the wiring diagram for the engine control unit. Now, in case you don't know the exact symbol or code for a specific control unit. For example, let's take the brake system. Brake or brake anti-lock. What do we do? We would pull up the entire group related to the brake system. Brake anti-lock system, hydraulic brake system, etc. Then we search for it in the wiring diagram section. As a result, you'll see the diagram appear. Here, ABR, this is the full wiring diagram for the brake system. And at that point, you'll learn that the control unit for the brake system is labeled N30 pound 4. So, if you can remember the symbol for a system like that, you'll be able to retrieve its wiring diagram directly as well. That's everything I wanted to show you. How to search for technical information quickly, how to save that data for future use and the tips I've used over time to help you work more efficiently and accurately with this software. Finally, let's move on to the last section. Important notes and reminders for using the software effectively. We've compiled everything we know about DTS Monaco into this book. It contains seven chapters that cover all the basic knowledge about the software. In addition, the book includes real-world repair cases and instructions on how to use DTS Monaco to code and unlock hidden features. When you purchase the book, you'll also be invited to join a private study group where you can ask questions, get support and practice the techniques discussed completely free of charge. We want to ensure that anyone who reads this book can become proficient in using DTS Monaco. If you find this video helpful or would like to see more content like this, please leave a like, subscribe and comment to give me the motivation to create more videos.